Welcome back to the Circuit Sphere. Today, I'll be working on this 2013 iMac 21.5 inch and giving it some much needed upgrades. So, here's my 2013 iMac. It's got a fourth generation 2.7 gigahertz i5 processor. 8 gigabytes of memory and a slow 500 gigabyte hard disk drive. In today's video, I'm going to address all three of these issues. I'll start by running benchmarks on the current setup, then walking you through the process of taking apart the iMac and swapping out the CPU, memory, and hard drive. Once all the upgrades are done, We'll rerun the benchmarks and see how much of a difference it makes. Finally, we'll discuss if these upgrades are worth it and if this iMac can still keep up in 2024. In this video, I'll utilize Geekbench 5, Unigen Heaven, Cinebench R23, and Blackmagic Disk Speed Test as benchmarking tools. Before we get started with the benchmarks, I just want to go over the system specs in a little bit more detail. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a late 2013 iMac 21.5 inch, 2.7 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i5, fourth generation, has 8 gigabytes, 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM, broken into two RAM modules. 4 gigabytes each. It's got a 500 gigabyte slow old school old fashioned hard drive. This one doesn't have any upgraded graphics, just has the Intel Iris graphics. The display 1920 by 1080. I think that the display on this iMac is actually really good. I enjoy using it. I've never had any complaints about the quality. Now let's dive in to the benchmarks. We'll start with Geekbench 5. Here's the results of our pre-upgrade benchmarks. I'm not going to go into detail on them because at the end of the video, I'm going to break it down and show the comparisons of the before and after. But feel free to pause this and take a look at the individual benchmarking scores. Now that we have our baseline benchmarks, we're going to get into the upgrades. But before we begin, I want to go over all the parts you'll need if you want to do this upgrade on your own iMac. I'll include links to everything in the description below. I'm going to be maxing out this iMac, so you'll need a fourth generation Intel i7 model 4770S processor. I got mine on eBay for around $50. You'll also need two 8 gigabyte DDR3 RAM sticks and a one terabyte SSD. I personally prefer Samsung Evo SSDs because I've never had any one of them fail on me. You'll also need an iMac screen removal tool like this right here white gloves so that you don't smudge the screen and replacement adhesive to seal the iMac back once the upgrades are done. And finally, you will need some Arctic 5 thermal paste as well as four metal clips to secure the screen in place for 24 hours while the adhesive cures. Now, diving into the upgrades, we obviously have to start by turning off the computer then I'm going to unplug everything out of the back making sure there's nothing in the USB port I'm going to set the mouse and the keyboard off to the side so it doesn't get in my way move the mouse pad over and then absolute must it needs to be fully disconnected from the power so make sure that the cable is unplugged now it's time to throw on the gloves so that we're careful not to do any 
damage to the display. Now that I've got my white gloves on and my opening tool, I'm going to go ahead and start slicing this open. Now, full disclosure, this iMac has been opened before, so it's going to come off a little easier. The process is the same to get it open. It just might take a few more rolls across the seam before it'll pop off. I like to start just right in the center, push it down, and then you just start rolling it. The way that this opening tool is designed, it doesn't damage any of the internal components, so you can just rub it up and down. And you'll see it start to separate from the top. Make sure you keep a hand right here so that it doesn't just flop down because there are some cables in here that will need to be removed. All right, so just gently pull it down. Not too far though, because as you'll see, now there are some cables that need to be unplugged. You want to gently reach in there to get these two right here at the top. There's one at the top there. And then this has a little latch on it. I apologize if I don't get the image well. It's got a little tab that you pull up on. And then that frees it so that you can pull it out. Now the display is no longer attached to the iMac. Then now on the bottom there's two little pull tabs, one on each side. You're going to want to make sure to stabilize the display so that things don't go flying. You'll just grab one of these. You'll pull that off. And try not to get the stupid thing stuck on your finger. Then from this side you'll pull this. And you now see how quick that can get away from you. Make sure you hold on tight to that. But now this display is free. You want to gently place it somewhere that is safe. Now, if you're like me and you can't do things without having feel in your fingertips, then take your gloves off and just kind of get the rest of this sticky off. We'll go in later and really clean it up because this is just double sided tape that I had holding this on temporarily from the last time that I worked on this. Now it's time to begin taking it apart with our iFixit toolkit. I'm going to start with the hard drive. I like to go crisscross applesauce on everything. Oop, be careful not to drop screws down in there. I suspect our biggest percentage performance increase is going to come from replacing this hard drive. And just set these two clips down that kind of hold the hard drive in place. And you can just reach in there. The connections on this side. And go ahead and free it. Set it off to the side. Now the next task is to get the logic board off the computer. Because the RAM and the CPU are on the back side of the logic board. Now this is the most technically difficult part of the upgrade. So, if you need to, rewatch this part a few times before attempting it on your own. I'm going to disconnect the Bluetooth and Wi Fi and do the screws to the right speaker. And there are a few cables right here in the center to disconnect from the logic board. And one down here. There's also a little cable right there in the bottom right corner that we will have to attach here in a second. Now we're going to unscrew the logic board itself. Be careful around the logic board. Or just do what I just did and 
drop the screw right on it. But don't really do that. Make sure that you have some method of keeping track of your screws. Mixing and matching screws isn't really ever fun. Now you can see that the logic board is loose. Speaker's loose. Now we need to take off the screws for the fan because it's all connected. One screw back behind here. All right, now we can set that aside, but boy, we will need to do some cleaning. Take a look at that. It's got some nasties in it. Holy cow, it really does. So we'll blow that out with some compressed air before we reattach it. Now we need to move on to the power supply. Uh, big disclaimer, you do run the risk of electrocuting yourself if this is not done properly. Be very cautious, do your own research to prevent harming yourself. careful all right and now just to detach it from the back of the logic board all righty here's our power supply all pulled out sorry that wasn't very graceful set that off to the side all right, the most stressful part's over. Now continuing on with removing more screws. We're going to remove the remainder of the hard drive bracket. Pulling this off and then unraveling the wires. Apple, always with that strong cable management. Now, we are going to undo... The heat sink exhaust. Oh shoot, I just did exactly what I didn't want to do. Well, darn it. And I'm fairly certain that once we remove this little Part there, I think we're free. Now it is a little bit of a pain. Oops, make sure you disc. I don't know how I missed that. Make sure that we disconnect the this right there. Now, the way that it fits so snugly and so tightly, you kind of gotta finesse it. Oops, there are two cables on the back side of the logic board. The one that connects to the hard drive. Our SATA cable. There we go. Before I begin to take apart the logic board, I just wanted to go over a few things that are on it. First things first, we do have a spot for an NVMe drive. I'm not going to put one in this machine, but you are free to put one in there. We have our RAM modules currently. This one has a total of 8 gigabytes. And then we have our heat sink, which will come off shortly so that we can upgrade the processor. 
Okay, pop these RAM modules out as they are the old ones. I'm also going to take the CMOS battery out or the PRAM battery. Might as well replace that. And then we can begin taking off the heat sink to get to our processor. Again, I have always enjoyed going crisscross applesauce when I take it off and put something back on. Now, as I've just figured out, the base model of the 2013 iMac has a soldered on processor. However, if you purchase the 3.5 gigahertz i5, you will have the option to upgrade your processor. So what I'm gonna do in this video, at least, is clean off all the old thermal paste and give it a fresh coat. back in the heat sink. And then apply our PRAM battery. Now we can put our RAM modules in. We're gonna go up to 16 gigabytes. make sure we get all of this old adhesive off so that when we put the new adhesive on it's not going on top of old stuff I'm going to begin to put that Together the board. I'm going to begin putting back together the iMac. I decided not to film putting everything back together because it's basically just doing the opposite of taking it apart. But I did show how to put in the hard drive and put the screen back on because I think it'll be really helpful for those of you following along with your own machines. Now for our final upgrade. We're going to get rid of this old slow hard drive. We're going to put in this 860 Evo 1 terabyte. SSD. So we've got power to our speakers. Reinstall our hard drive brackets. Now before I seal it back together, I'm going to put the screen on and powered on just to make sure we got life. I'm going to put my gloves back on. I got to get rid of the residue on the monitor first. I forgot about that. Now we can do our test power on. Woo! 
be very careful about that. Oh, the cow out was broken. Our clips will come in handy while we do our test so that we don't start so we don't lose our display. Drum roll, please. This is always the part that makes me most nervous. Did I put it back together right? Woohoo! Yay! All righty. Since it powered on, we can go ahead and unplug it again. Take off the LCD. And then put the adhesive on. Just be very careful. Remember, there's nothing holding it on. All right, gently take your screen back off. And now, we have all of our adhesive strips. put this adhesive on the wrong one hopefully that doesn't cause a catastrophic problem see that's supposed to go right there over the top of that mess that up the LCD on permanently get my gloves my biggest advice on this sticky on the adhesive is uh, take more time than I did make sure you map it out a little better than I did because you'll end up putting it in the wrong spot if you don't Just apply your clips and voila. Now that we've got everything put back together, we need to reinstall the operating system on our hard drive. So make sure you plug your keyboard in, push the power button, and hold down the command and R button at the same time. That'll take us to recovery mode. Choose a network. Type in your password. And then it'll start internet recovery 
this could take a while, as it says. So whenever I put a new hard drive in on a Mac, I like to start off by going into the disk utility. And just giving it a fresh erase. And if it's an SSD, I like to name it SSD. Once that's done, click on the X. Make sure you're connected to the internet. Click reinstall OS 10. Now this particular model is going to make a start with Lion. But then we can upgrade it all the way to 10, 15 Catalina. Or no, it's making a start of Mavericks. And then you just click continue. Click agree. Your SSD will pull up. Click on that. Click install. And then it's going to do its magic. And this could take a while. Depending on your internet connection largely. Now that we have Mac OS Mavericks installed, we can just go through the normal setup. Since Mavericks is super outdated, what I found the best way to get going on a Mac OS Catalina upgrade is to go to the old Safari and then type in Chrome. And once you get Chrome pop up, download that you're going to get a lot of things that are in the wrong spot because this is so old the browser doesn't know what it's doing with half of the stuff it's loading and even though it's an old version of chrome what i found is it's pretty good especially to just get mac os catalina to start then you're going to want to right click on chrome and open if you don't do that it'll redirect it then click open. Now we can type in Mac OS Catalina download. And then we're going to click that. And then view in the Mac App Store. Get. It's going to make you put your Apple ID in. And there we go. Now you can just continue to go through the normal upgrade process. Select your hard drive, click install, type your password in, and it's going to begin installing on your hard drive. After the install is done, it should pop right up with Catalina installed. Now we can do our comparison benchmarks and see what kind of performance we can actually get out of these upgrades. So when we checked out for the Geekbench 5 benchmark, it seems like the performance actually dropped a tad after the upgrade. I kind of expected that there wouldn't be much of a boost since we couldn't swap out the processor in this iMac. But hey, I'm not too bothered by the small dip in the score. Those numbers tend to bounce around every time you run a benchmark test anyway. The Cinebench R23 score didn't change much either, only by four points. This is also due to the fact that we couldn't upgrade the processor. And the exact same story with the Unigen score, with almost the exact same score pre and post upgrade. Now, here's where the upgrade really shines. By switching to the Samsung Evo one terabyte SSD, we boosted our write speeds by a whopping 356%, going from 87.3 megabytes per second up to 398 and the read speed is even more impressive with a massive 468 percent increase from 92.1 megabytes per second to 522.7 this upgrade is definitely a big win so wrapping it up should you really go for these upgrades it really comes down to your own setup if you've got one of these old iMacs collecting dust and you're looking to give it a boost for 2024, then yeah, it's totally worth the effort. 
but I wouldn't advise splurging on one just for the upgrade. You can find these iMacs on eBay for anywhere between 200 to 350 bucks. But honestly, there are newer iMac models out there that offer way more bang for your buck. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Remember to enjoy your hobbies and until next time, have fun and take time for your passions. So high, I'm hypnotized.